Hello and welcome to the fourth in my series of masterclass videos for Copperhead. In this video I want to discuss some of the more advanced features that have been uh, added to the program since launch. And one of those features is note repeats. Now as you can see here I've prepared a simple 8 note triggered bass which sounds like this. Now as of version 1.02 we now have a latch mode option uh, on the top of the sequencer window and when this is engaged uh, we can simply tap a key and let go and it will carry on playing the sequence and it will continue playing the sequence until we press it again to release the note. Now this just mirrors the option latch sequence that was here in the menu all along but now we don't have to do any menu diving. Now to demonstrate the note repeat, I'm going to set the uh, sequence of speed to quarter notes. And I'm going to press the note repeat button at the top right of the sequencer window. And at that point you'll see that an, a series of numbers appear on each note within the sequencer. In this case they're all set to 1. Now in repeat mode I can tap, hold and drag up. Uh, to change that note repeat value. So it's exactly the same process as changing the velocity of a note, only when repeat is enabled it changes the repeat count. So this method allows you to get fast trills and, uh, and, uh, and triplets without the need to have a um, long sequence and fast tempo. Now it's important to note that the note repeat will split up the note length into equal parts. So I have to delete that last note and add a note of uh, two units in length and then set the division to four. This happens. So I hope that's clear, it's actually splitting a note length into an equal number of units. Now I want to take a look at the new modulation mode inside the sequencer. This is very handy if you're not using the sequencer to generate notes. You can instead use it to create additional modulation. Now this is great if you run out of LFOs and want to uh, utilise the sequencer to produce uh, additional movement within the sound. So take a listen to this uh, patch. Now as you can already hear it has some filter movement but if we want to uh, add additional movement to that let's just first enable the sequencer. And as you can see by default it just uh, generates a set of notes but if we go into the uh, sequence options we can turn on uh, modulation mode and if you notice the the notes are ghosted out now now if you've seen my previous videos you'll know that the sequencer if we change the edit mode can uh, edit CC values and send uh, CC information to various elements within the display. In this case I'm just going to send something to the LFO frequency or the speed of the LFO, LFO1 that is. Now in this case we want to control the frequency in Hertz so turn off the sync mode otherwise it will be synced to tempo. And since we need something to modulate I'm going to turn up the amp setting. So although we hear the sequencer controlling the LFO speed, it's doing so in steps. So if I was to exaggerate this stepping here and play that back, we would hear the steps involved. And that's especially true if we're listening to something like uh, cutoff frequency. If we want uh, the LFO 
to be controlled in a smoother nature. We can bring up the menu here and we can turn on modulation smoothing. Now, as you can see here, every time I trigger a key, the uh, sequence starts from the beginning. But we can always turn on continuous mode uh, from the menu to uh, enable um, the sequence to loop. Now, it doesn't stop there because we can have multiple lanes of controllers. So I can add in a, a lane to control the fine tune, say, of the oscillator. <laughs> Now, if we turn the oscillator mix all the way to one side, we should hear it a little bit better. Although, I've got a feeling <laughs> I put the uh, tuning on oscillator one, so let's check. Yes, we did. So, if we turn the oscillator mix all the way to the other side, we should hear it. <laughs> when you may want to uh, copy and paste controllers from one lane to another and uh, you can do that but the thing that you need to be aware of is that the copy and paste is context sensitive so suppose we want to copy these fine tune uh, controllers to uh, uh, to another lane we just simply go into the menu sequence the menu and pick copy now, if I change the uh, the edit mode to be editing uh, oscillator to fine tune, uh, we can simply go back into the menu and pick paste. At this point, we get asked whether we want to paste a whole sequence or just the controller lane we're looking at. Now, if we want to delete these controllers, we just hit the bin icon to the uh, left of the grid, and we can either delete all controllers or just a selected controller. Now, one thing to be aware of is if we were editing notes and uh, we copied a set of notes into the clipboard um, whenever we come to paste within a controller lane uh, the only things that would be available to us are um, paste the entire sequence because we uh, we're only copied in the notes so if I quickly pop back to uh, notes edit mode and uh, copy you'll see uh, that it is very much context sensitive so if I change the sequence now and hit paste it'll ask us whether we want to replace the entire sequence or just the notes in the clipboard now the paste entire sequence is very useful for copying between presets so very handy function now before we leave the sequencer I just want to point out that it is possible to load and save uh, stencils from the sequencer using the load and save sequence options on the menu. So as you can see here I can save this uh, fine tune uh, modulation to a specific sequence and uh, from the same menu we can load that back again it's an alternative to copy and paste in between patches if you want something more permanent and you want to be able to recall those at a later point for uh, for other patches of patch creation then this is probably a better way to go now at this point i'd like to thank leo uh, who's created a sound for more uh, new patch bank uh, which is available in version 1.02 and uh, Leo has been hard at work creating a, a number of additional patches uh, covering various uh, different uh, groups and um, yeah a big thank you to Leo so we're, we're well up and over 200-250 patches now so uh, if anyone else fancies uh, creating sound banks and donating them to the cause uh, I'll be quite happy to uh, to add them and also give you a mention as I have here for Leo in the help file so we, I can provide a link to the website or YouTube channel. 
Now, although we've gone over backing up and restoring of presets in a previous video, uh, people keep asking me the same old questions and getting stuck on the same old thing. So the I'm going to go over that right now. Uh, the important thing here is that we have the filer down here in the dock. So you can copy that filer to the dock and that allows us to drag it up and dock uh, as a kind of a side window. Um, and from there we can open up the uh, Copperheads uh, preset manager and we can drag and drop an entire bank from the, pre the uh, preset manager directly into the files app. Now it's important to remember uh, or look at the extension that's on the end of this uh, folder. Uh, and only if it has that specific extension can it be dragged and dropped back into the preset manager. So do not remove that file extension. Also, it's a good idea to uh, right click and compress that uh, bank. And then it's in a format, in a zip format, which we can then send on to other people or back up uh, for future reference now if we click on a zip file it will automatically expand and then we can drag that back into uh, into the preset manager so it's it's rather simple but uh, just beware of that file extension and don't remove it so that just about covers all the new editions in version 1.02 so until the next time i'm going to say uh, thank you for watching don't forget to thumb up the video and uh, subscribe to the channel.